Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Hello everyone, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to Ranger Rob Country Living. Uh, today's video is actually to um, uh, answer a question that came across one of our videos of, uh, of about how to you develop, uh, create, and sell a product on Amazon. And of course, a lot of folks who watch our videos have always seen that we advertise the Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. So uh, let me start. If I get my stuff here, let me start that this is our Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags. And uh, first of all, you have to have an idea. And my idea was um, I used to travel a lot. And uh, one of the, you know, we had Cinder with us, our chocolate lab all the time. And uh, I, I have a favorite kind of bag to use that, um, that let me show you one of mine. <coughs> that uh, is a bag with handles. And uh, here, let me hold it up. And uh, these are our bags. This has been in my back pocket. And uh, you can see uh, uh, whenever we went to parks or went hiking or anything like that, every once in a while you grab a bag out of uh, little dispensers they have at the parks. And uh, you never know what kind of shape or size or how thin or thick they are. And I always found them kind of irritating because you have to turn them. You put your hand in, you turn it inside out, which is really hard without handles. And some are real skinny, depends on the size of your hand. And uh, anyway, so we always just didn't like those. And a lot of times you get your stuff on the hands. And so uh, we used to buy our own bags that there was not that many out there, and still isn't, um, getting poopy bags with handles on them. And so uh, I just got frustrated because every time we travel, it was just hard to find them. And, hard to get them and a lot of pet stores didn't cut, have them. And so uh, anyway, so I uh, the ones that I did order were definitely smaller than what ours are. So after we got done traveling, I decided to uh, create my own product and my wife decided, you know, that's not a bad idea. And you know, the hardest part is convincing your spouse <laughs> to do this project because it's no easy task. So I, uh, First of all, came up to the fact that I wanted a bag with handles, and but I wanted it a little wider and a little bit deeper. And so uh, uh, when you look at our bags, you say, oh, well, they're pretty much the same. But if you notice our crease on the side here, it goes in actually quite farther than other bags. So when you put our hand, I'm trying not to open this one up yet, but when you put your hand in ours, uh, you'll notice the extra space right away and also how deep it is. And the cool part, now I'll put my hand in this thing, um, is when you put your hand in it, uh, you'll see this thing's gigantic. So it can handle any size dog. And you say, well, why is it a little bit clear? And I know some people don't want to see the stuff and they don't like the feeling of it and stuff, but sometimes you got to see the target. And so you can kind of see what's going on. But when you have this on your hand, uh, let me come over here. Hold on to one of the handles. Your hand's inside. When you go to pick up the stuff, um, let me put something in this. Let's see. How about some hand sanitizer? So when you pick up the stuff, let me get back here like this and turn it inside out. See how see how far away your hand is from the stuff? And when you turn it inside out, pull your handles through. And there you go. It's in the bag. And then all you have to do is tie a knot in it. Well, you want this bag large. And uh, uh, anyway, it's uh, a bag that I really like. I wouldn't create something I didn't really like. So uh, that was the first idea. So then the next step is, I'll keep this bag off to the side. The next step is, and we started off with just the sheets, which are just a hundred and um, I wanted two months supply. We figured everybody might use two of these a day. So these are the sheets. And uh, so that was the first idea. So where do you have it made? Well, if you're gonna, first of all, right now, 
if you're not open-minded and if you're not a business person and don't look at the realities of business and marketing, then you probably should stop here because the rest of this might, especially two years ago, would have been no big deal, but you got to figure out where you're going to have your product built. And so the problem is you probably have competition. So you need to ask yourself, okay, I can create a bag like that, but mine's going to be, um, you know, uh, two, three, four dollars more than everybody else's. Well, that just doesn't cut it. Um, unfortunately, here's the reality. Americans like quality, but they want it cheap. And so uh, you really have to ask yourself, oh, I'd love to say it's USA made. And here we go. This is the part where you might want to stop. If you're not into marketing and selling a product and making money and being profitable, then stop. We're, you're done here. Go ahead and shut off the video. But if you're ready to move forward, then we'll talk reality. Reality is because over the years, our, our standard of living in the United States, people expect to make a little bit more and they have to. And uh, the, the fact are is America cannot make small products um, at a low overhead. Um, as compared to other countries. Now, other countries would be like India, Mexico, um, of course, China, and I think Vietnam is also in there. Those are kind of countries that are kind of user-friendly to the United States. And you ask yourself, if you know, and of course, I went to American manufacturers at first. I could not build the product. Remember, you you got to be a profitable product. So uh, I'm going to tell you that you have to be able to sell your product at least 50% or above what you cost you to build it. And you have to also consider what's called landed cost. And landed cost would be the price of the product and having it shipped to you, all the products, and, and then add those together. So let's say your product's $5 a box. Mine are lower than that, obviously. but And it costs, uh, depending on how many you order. Like when we did our first order, we ordered 1,500 boxes. And we had to do a minimum of 100,000 sheets. <clears throat> so we wanted that number. So let's say it was $5 a box. Ours was cheaper, obviously. I'm not saying ours. That's our wholesale price. Um, then you need to take whatever maybe it costs, let's say $1,000 to send that to you from wherever you had it built. You need to take that and divide it by 1500 and add that to your cost. And that would be your landed cost. But, that, but wait, there's more because depending on where you have it shipped, like I was new, so I, I could have had 1500 bags or boxes shipped directly to Amazon. And we'll talk about Amazon in a minute. Um, to save a, a jump, you know, uh, uh, besides, you know, coming directly to me, then shipping it again to Amazon. Um, and that's something you would want to do in the future when you really explode in numbers. Um, so keep that in mind. So uh, you have to kind of make the decisions of, are you so confident that this thing will just boom and go off the market like crazy to have it shipped directly from wherever you're having manufactured to Amazon, once you have an account set up with them. Um, the other thing you need to do is whenever you create a product, you need to create on the back, you see these codes in, uh, right here. You need to create a UPC, UPC number, UCP, <laughs> I think that's it, um, which is a tracking number that is used all over the United States and other places and which gives information about your product and your uh, your suggested retail price. Um, every product gets its own UPC, which is required by Amazon and of course required by many stores too, because that's how they'll track their, pro everything's done in barcodes. So uh, anyway, so, uh, so you taking a step back, you go, okay, what do I wanna do? Well, I wanted to have a cute name and I, I liked my old, it's a nickname called Ranger Rob. But then before I even did that, I had to kind of see, well, if I use that name, will I get in trouble? So I had to do some search and there was a cartoon character out there called Ranger Rob. So then I started tracking to see, is there a trademark uh, of Ranger Rob? And there wasn't. So 
I put in and which costs about four to five hundred dollars uh, and re requested a trademark for the Ranger Rob poopy bag or Ranger Rob name to be a pet product and uh, it takes about eight months for that process to go through so in the meantime when you create it when you know when they first uh, start doing a trademark the first thing they do is do a search to see if there's anybody that competes against you if you find out that nobody's using the trademark then you can um, and you have um, the paperwork in place you can put a uh, register um, you can put TM which means it's a register uh, actually it's, you start off with M uh, R um, with a circle around it saying it's a registered trademark then when the trademark officially goes through you can change it to TM which is trademarked and so now all of our products now um, will eventually have TM on it as we print these out so that's the next thing is whatever name you use you need to do a little research to make sure you're not infringing on anybody else so uh, you can see there, there's money involved here um, so you may as well stop here if you don't think you can make a product without putting money up front then you probably should stop here because <laughs> you need to put money up front so uh, we decided to go with 1500 and we could go much more the more you buy the cheaper your product would be uh, so we started off with 1500 boxes and and that's just of the first model I'll tell you more about the other models later um, so anyway uh, so the next thing was starting to find out oh what would I like it to look like well I wanted to make a graphic of me and my dog well I can't you can't use like the little emoji software and stuff like that you have to have an original uh, so you don't infringe on anybody I went to Fiverr um, and had somebody I showed them kind of what I wanted I wanted to make a little cartoon of me and my dog and I had that developed for about $35 and uh, that it which it makes it officially mine so that graphic is mine and uh, so uh, nobody can give you a hard time about the name nobody can give me a hard time about the uh, the graphic either you can see also on Ranger Rob you can see I have my registered trademark in uh, insignia whatever you call it uh, on here and I think on our first original boxes we didn't we should have put like an R but um, anyway uh, our first boxes were still waiting for everything to go through and I didn't know that you could put the R on there at the time actually we started development of the box way before the trademark was even started because it takes time because when you start working with a company you gotta, like what size do you want your box uh, I wanted to make sure that they were good for retail so you see I have a hanging thing on here for shelves um, you want to be informative uh, this box was less informative than our newer ones which the newer ones are much more entail about what our products all about so there's lessons learned along the way too um, and you'll make mistakes uh, so we came up with a, uh, a box design like this I wanted it to stand out my co competitors really don't have flashy boxes like this and I wanted a cute name a funny name and so uh, I wanted people to look at poopy bags as one as a good bag you want a good bag but two it's funny <laughs> it's just you want poop is funny you know <laughs> I don't care what you say so you may as well laugh about it so we came up with the Ranger Rob pet poopy bags and by the way I put pet in front of this for the description because just in case uh, some people use these things when they're hiking and stuff and you can use these for that but I didn't want I wanted to make sure everybody realized that it was for pet you know your pets your dogs and people use these for more than just dogs they use it for iguanas they use them for their cat boxes all kinds of stuff um, and then they come in handy for a lot of other things so we do make little commercials suggesting what else you could use them for um, lately I've showed in one of my videos that uh, we have little mouse traps with buckets and you get the mice out of there <laughs> I just use Ranger Rob poopy bags so I don't have to touch them and uh, anyway so that was kind of the beginning so then uh, um, I generally had the idea how big I wanted my box and I did use a different country I'll tell you right now in China 
was my choice because of the how easy it is to work with them through a particular website called Alibaba. I, some of you people may have heard of that. It's a coordination software with different countries that can create these kind of products. And you can find, depending on what you're having built, you got to find a company that can make bags. And so you find companies that deal with plastic bags. And so uh, some of them already make some kind of dog bag. But um, what made ours different is ours isn't like everybody else's. You could literally go to somebody who makes a bag already, use their same design, if it's not trademarked, uh, patented, um, and literally change the color, put different print on it, and call it yours. But we didn't want to do that because we wanted a bigger bag. We wanted a deeper bag. We wanted them to smell like lemon, and uh, we wanted handles. So we literally built the bags from scratch on our design. So once you go to Alibaba, you create an account, you start going through the searches and finding companies that work with plastic bags and dog bags. And so you'll get more than one, several of them. And actually, we actually our first design mock-up, uh, we rejected the first company. Um, it wasn't until we found another company through Alibaba that said, yeah, we can do that and we can do it better. And because we had problems with uh, when they put the lemon scented stuff, they used the oil and they put drops of oil in there and actually made the bags stick together and make the uh, ink run and stick to one another. And uh, oh my old boy, when he opened his bags, it was like, oh my gosh, knock you over with lemon. Anyway, they just didn't get it. <clears throat> so I guess I lost about $300 on the first development. Then I found another and uh, uh, they developed this um, and my first order included their development. And so this company not only made my box, and so we made the graphics, sent it to them, and slowly de developed a box design and uh, uh, gave them what we wanted. They did a mock-up of everything, sent me, you know, they stay, and it's kind of funny because you know, they have a hard time speaking English sometimes, and so the wording gets kind of funny. So you have to kind of repeat things a lot of times and make sure they understand what you want. And then they'll come back with their designs, uh, graphic designs of what the box looks like, and also the graphic designs of what the bag looks like. And so, uh, uh, so the first thing I did is have them develop like 25 up front as a promo um, to see if they could develop the box and the product the way I wanted. And all this takes time. We're talking weeks and months. And uh, by then we got to a point that this is what they sent me. This is identical to it. I had made a change to it. Um, this is what they sent me. I liked it. We tested the bags. We never had one bag break. They're waterproof. They hold water. They're so good. Um, we were just, yes, you're the one. You're going to do it. So by then, I think we had probably another $300 involved in development and shipping of the first promo stuff. And uh, so we went ahead and put the order in for $1,500. Every time I could increase that number, our cost would go down. But you know, we had a limited budget too. I mean, so you're still looking at about $2,600, I think it was, or more for us um, to develop the first box. And that doesn't count the uh, the setup and all that stuff. So let's say $3,500 was involved in the first setup. So once again, that takes time. And then, of course, they send me pictures as they're making things and show me the boxes and all that stuff. And then they it takes at least 30 days to get the product shipped over here to the United States. <clears throat> and you can remember, this was like two years ago, almost a year and a half ago. Um, so all this takes so much time. And so uh, um, to make a long story short, one day a pallet <laughs> from UPS uh, worth of 18 boxes of, of uh Ranger Rob Poopy Bags came, which is kind of a cool day. You go, oh my gosh, they're here, they're here, you're nervous. So you get your products, but let me take a step back. During that time, uh, you need to, uh, you know, we decided we wanted to sell on Amazon. So we, prior to that, went to Amazon and, and let me uh, 
stop the video real quick and I'm going to switch to another screen so you can see what I'm talking about uh, here in a moment. Okay, I'm back. And so what I have on the screen here is your typical Amazon uh, website. You say, well, how do I become an Amazon seller? Well, if you scroll down to the bottom, which I got to kind of see when I do two things at once here, scroll down to the bottom and down at the bottom right here, I don't know if you can see it. I've got my uh, mouse going around it. It says sell products on Amazon. So if you press that, this is where you have to sign up and you'll hit the sign up button and uh, hang tight there for a minute, guys. And so you can see this is my account and I can actually see um, my sales uh, right away. Um, and also uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like inside here. Um, this is our Ranger Rob poopy bags. We have other products up here and uh, you can uh, check your inventory. The whole works here. So from this website, and I don't want, I can't reveal too much here. Let's see here. Um, let me switch over to this other screen. And it's like today we haven't sold anything, but the day is still young. But um, that kind of generally gives you an idea is that you have um, an area in here to control all your different kind of products. All mine are down at the bottom here along with hats and stuff we sell. But in here you can, uh, you have to work on your description. You'll, uh, re you'll give them your UPC number for your products, uh, things like that. And uh, you can see how much inventory you have. Um, and uh, let me clear the screen real quick. And uh, so in Amazon, you can, you create your products. You, uh, uh, the other big thing is getting pictures done. Like uh, you see this one box with the white background. Sounds easy, but you got to create a white background. So, hey, that was a trip to Michael's and got some white background and a lot of heavy duty lights. And uh, you can literally do your own pictures just with your cell phone. Your cell phone can be quite helpful instead of getting a professional. Um, I know there's a lot to talk about here. So uh, uh, the cost to be a seller, a reseller at Amazon basically is $39 a month. That's just access to the site. But you got to remember, um, uh, you got to ship products to them, manage your inventory, don't have too much inventory or you get charged for storage from Amazon. Then you obviously Amazon does free shipping, correct? Um, this is just one way to go. And so you need to build in the fact that they're going to charge more on top of your product. So let's say your product's worth five bucks. They may add another three or four dollars on top of that, which means if you're selling your product for ten dollars, you or you're only making two or three, uh, maybe two bucks a, a box. Um, so you, you can see everybody ha has has takes something. And the fact that it costs money to ship to them, now, the good thing is you can use Amazon's UPS account to send things to them so you can get a discount rate. So if you're going to like the UPS store to send stuff and you go, oh, my gosh, well, I can send 64 boxes of uh, of the regular sheets to Amazon for 12 bucks. That's the difference. Um, if you were and that's a 50 pound box. So you can see you can use their account, their UPS account to ship things. Which is, uh, and of course, whatever that charges, it'll go against whatever your profits are. So you need to keep that in mind that everything, everybody takes their chunk and stuff. So um, you might think we're just rolling in dough here and stuff, but we need much more volume. So uh, so that brings me into the next thing is, um, well, let me, before I go into the marketing part, I also wanted to say that about six to eight months later after we launched the Ranger Rob poopy bags over and over again. I kept hearing it would be really cool if you guys had a, uh, a rolled version on a roll. So that was the creation of two products, Ranger Rob poopy bags on rolls and Ranger Rob poopy bags on rolls with a dispenser. <coughs> okay. So start the whole process over again. Obviously I went back to the company that I used before and told them we want to make Ranger Rob poopy bags on rolls. Well, 
that was kind of an endeavor too. Well, we created the boxes and uh, um, we, did, you know, we uh, did things a little bit different. Um, we got a little bit more information. We got the trademark information on here, and we did a little more details in the back of what the bag looks like and the more of the dimensions and stuff. Once again, it's got a UPC code in the back right here. And of course I had to buy two more UPC codes. And so once you get those, you get a little image of it and you send the image to the people building your box and they'll place it on the box. <clears throat> um, the problem was I made a custom design bag different than everybody else's. Well, to use the machine that rolls these out and, and cuts them and stuff, well, it takes dies. Well, guess what? Mine had to have special dies <laughs> because uh, my bag was larger than other people's bags. If I would have just copied somebody else's bags that I already developed, it would have been no problem. So there was $500 right up front. I had to pay for new dies to develop on the machinery in order for them to cut the bags I wanted onto rolls. And it can only fit so many rolls, uh, bags on a roll. So it was 15 bags per roll. So, uh, then you have to do, get the kind of measurements of that is and then create a box that fits them. So my um, reef, my reef, we call these the refill boxes. Um, I needed eight rolls in there to be a, a two months supply. When we did the one with the dispenser has a little cloth dispenser in there. First of all, we have bigger rolls than most people, so the only dispenser that would work is a cloth dispenser, which would look really cool, by the way. But we, um, because of the cost of the fabric dispenser, the box with the fabric dispenser only comes with four rolls in order so as to keep the price at a reasonable amount. So uh, once again, you go through the development of the box, you go through the development of the product, getting the sizes right, and then uh, of course, when we get all the sizes right, when they actually make everything, they got to size the box and everything came out fine. Um, and then, of course, there's shipping. So I ended up ordering 500 of the ones with dispensers, 750 boxes. We're talking boxes of uh, the uh, just the refills. And, of course, uh, while that's all going on in Amazon, we had to create two new products, two more uh, and then price them out, descriptions, keywords, the whole works. Um, and uh, waited for the products to come. And as soon as we got them, we sent like, I don't know, maybe 50 boxes of each to Amazon at first. Turns out, by the way, we didn't expect this, but one of our highest selling um, products is the new one with all the uh, ones on rolls. Um, a lot of people don't even want dispensers. They just keep them in their purses, pockets, uh, uh, um it all depends on people or just interesting that way. Um, but everybody who buys our products are repeat customers. It's amazing. So um, that kind of tells you a little bit about the second part. Now, here's the, you just, you think it's all over. You finally get your product. You get it all registered with Amazon. You get it to them. They take their markups. You know, it's different for everybody. It all depends on how much the product weighs and all that stuff. Well, uh, the other thing is you got to make sure at home, if you're going to ship stuff to Amazon, you need to have a scale. You need to have uh, packing tape nearby and a good printer because you'll print off your UPS uh, shipping labels onto your box. Uh, so uh, when Amazon gets it, they just scan it and they go, oh, this box has got 64 boxes in it. It registers in their system. They unpack it, put it on the shelves, and then they distribute it, not to just one location, but several locations. And so they may split your order up to maybe uh, <clears throat> 30 to California, another 30 over the East Coast, spread them out based on the statistics. I know it's a lot to take in, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, anyway, so, but that's not the hard part. Then when the real money comes in is not the products, is not the setting up the Amazon, it's marketing. So we uh, chose not to go with a marketing firm and if we did, we'd probably be rich by now. But you're talking about ten to twenty-five thousand dollars to get a good marketing firm behind your product. Well, luckily, obviously, you see us do a lot of videos. We do. Uh, we have a radio station. We have uh, syndications that um, are now doing commercials of our products. And so, 
Once we kind of get all that rolling, we actually get our advertising through radio, on internet radio. We get it through our own videos. And of course, we have our own pages we created. We post our uh, ads to different locations. We do do pay-per-click occasionally, just kind of keep our product in front of people's faces. Uh, on Facebook, and we use, uh, I use Google for a while and, and YouTube, but um, I'll tell you one thing, advertising will just suck you dry. And so uh, we have approached a few stores, um, haven't pushed that real hard. And by the way, there's even a, seems like a gimmick to every store. Some stores all have like a, a membership place that you can go to where all the people with pet products you can join for $2,500 or something like that. It's like, oh, no, I don't. Anyway, but um, there's a lot of things we could do better. We could try to go out and get out in some stores. Um, we're kind of hoping stores might discover us. But uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, just because you got your product out a year ago, it may take you a year or two to get your product out there and getting people to use it. And so uh, we're just at that cusp where uh, orders are picking up, more people are talking about our product and lots of reorders. And so uh, uh, we're very fortunate considering we're not using a marketing firm. Um, and of course, there's the other way of doing things. You can also have your own little warehouse and take orders uh, Amazon and you need, and you'll ship them from your warehouse directly to the, to the client and then you inform, uh, Amazon every time you're shipping and that can be quite stressful because you're not going to be going on vacation much because what are you going to do if you're on vacation and three orders of your poopy bags come in and you got to ship them out and there's no one at the warehouse to do it. Uh, that's one problem. Uh, two, you always have to have materials, boxes, tape, printers, the whole works and you'll be going to UPS a lot or sometimes you'll just be sending them through uh, uh, your post office so you can sell products as a merchant and uh, and then you coordinate all your ordering and your deliveries through Amazon informing them that you have shipped that tells them that they can send a message saying the product's been shipped that's why sometimes when you go to a product you know so come directly from the manufacturer and not from uh, Amazon um, and it may also affect whether you can be a prime member or not <clears throat> Um, so anyway, uh, uh, I did also try Shopify and actually sell my product on my own, but Shopify was $49 a month. And then you take that cost and then like, and look at how sales are doing it privately. It, the numbers didn't match. So we shut that down and just used, uh, Amazon. Um, and, uh, but other people they'll find products like maybe they're built in another country that are uh, maybe a toy and it costs a dollar and you can sell it for twelve ninety five. So some people order, you know, a thousand of uh, a toy truck and then ship them to their house, um, package or have them packaged uh, there with UPC codes, depending on what it is, um, and then ship them all to Amazon and sell them for twelve ninety five and make a killing. Um, so yeah, uh, I think they call that, uh, there's also what they call arbitrage type of thing. I think that's the right word uh, where people will go to other stores, get bargains at other stores, buy up certain products and sell, sell them, uh, you know, up with a markup. Uh, so yeah, crazy stuff. Um, so anyway, I hope that kind of helps you uh, understand what it takes to get into Amazon and do what they call FBA. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what that stands for. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, nothing's free. It costs money to make money. Um, you could try to go on your own and sell them. Uh, I know like in, in the farming areas, people sell things like honey and stuff like that. But if you get a product that actually, uh, meets the, you know, and of course when you have a product, you also got to make sure it's safe. So does it, um, like if it's something with chemicals in it, let's say I made my own hand sanitizer, I'd have to identify what's in the product. You have to make sure it's all labeled properly. You have to put warning labels on it. You need to make sure it meets everything that you want, can do to sell a product, uh, based on the United States laws. Uh, and, uh, 
So uh, luckily, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, we did put a warning that keep the bags away from children. That was uh, suffice for what we needed to do. Um, but if I was to make hand sanitizer, I'd have to say do not swallow, keep away from children, uh, is poisonous or whatever. You need to identify all this stuff, tell what chemicals are, what ratios of what everything that's in it, uh, like alcohol. And, um, and then to ship some things from overseas that have um, products in it. Let's say you're selling e-cigarettes, have nicotine, you have to meet the FDA laws and requirements. So there's, there's a little more complication to different kinds of products. If you sell toys, you got to make sure that it's safe uh, in the United States to sell. It's not a danger to uh, children. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of other factors to keep in mind. You create food, you're going to have to meet the requirements of FDA and some health administration to make sure that, that uh, like beef jerky or something like that is sealed properly and it can have a good shelf life and is identified of uh, how long it would last and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope that was useful to you. I know it was a lot of information. F please feel free to use the comments below um, to uh, ask more questions. I might have forgotten something. Um, but I can go on and on with this stuff. So uh, it was fine. If somebody asked me right away, was it worth it? Um, well, I'm not getting rich. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, between the radio stations and the cost that we uh, we pay for licensing, for copyrights and all the kind of stuff, uh, this helps cover the cost. Um, the software you see me using costs us money. The uh, uh, different things that we do, the radio uh, radio station licensing and, and, and uh, cloud um, soft, um, radio station stuff uh, that we produce that stuff with, um, all of our equipment. This microphone alone is a $500 mic. Um, and so, you know, we've been able to use better equipment and better software as time goes on because we have other incomes that help pay for all this. Is it big? No. Um, I wish I would have had a product that was a little more, uh, more, uh, more profit margin in it, but I don't regret this at all. Um, we uh, are not losing money. We're just kind of moving right along. Of course, there was a lot of advertising mistakes. We spent money on advertising up front, realizing it was taking all of our profits. We need to kind of regroup how we're going to do that. Um, so you need to keep all those things in mind. but. You need to be open-minded. You need to realize you need to create a product that people will buy and it's priced right. And this day and age, um, having it built overseas is still a reality. And so um, don't think that I ever go away because it's not my fault. It's our fault. We want products cheap. We're Walmart kind of people. I mean, as long as you do that, you're going to see made in India, made in China, made in uh, Vietnam, made in Mexico um, for a long, long time. So uh, that's the reality of business. And once again, if you're not up for that, um, then you're not in, you shouldn't be doing something like this because um, it's all about business. It's not about um, personalities or at um, your ethics against making things outside of the country. Um, you need to open your mind. That's why so many things are made in different countries because you as a consumer demand it. And so that's how it is. So anyway, I hope that was in informational enough for you. Once again, leave comments below. Uh, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And don't forget to go on Amazon and pick some, some Ranger Rob poopy bags. First of all, they're awesome bags. And second of all, it helps us. And uh, and by the way, these do degrade in a landfill. So um, they're not uh, uh, bio, um, <laughs> biodegradable, but they will break down totally in landfills over time. So we've done tests. We've actually left these outside. Um, and they do over, it takes a while, but they start breaking down and actually will disintegrate over time. So uh, we're happy about that. If we went the other route, you couldn't afford them. And that's why most biodegradable poopy bags uh, just don't sell. They're too expensive to build. But if you can get a plastic that will break down over time, um, then uh, 
I mean, they have to be in the elements. They have to be in the sun and rain and all that stuff before they even start breaking down. But um, <laughs> anyway, they're super strong. They don't leak and they don't break. I mean, I mean, you could break them if you really ripped them apart. But um, they're awesome. They work really good. We stand by the product. So there you go, guys. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, have a great day. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.